Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. If you are looking for a way of understanding where the general sentiment around AI is right now, look no further than the difference in reception to two studies from Ivy League universities that have come out over the last six months. We spent a huge portion of this summer and frankly continue to have to deal with that inane MIT air quotes study, if you can even call it that, that interviewed 52 executives seemingly chosen for convenience of being around, and looked at public earnings statements for companies explicitly saying that they were seeing new profitability from their AI initiatives, all on the way to proclaiming that 95% of AI initiatives were failing. That statistic has been included in so many analyses and media pieces and blog posts and pitches. It is honestly, at this point, much to my chagrin, probably the most quoted most ubiquitous study around AI shared this year. Meanwhile, a longitudinal study from Wharton on its third year, with a much more comprehensive and verifiable academic methodology that surveyed around 800 enterprise leaders across a variety of functions, has gotten barely any attention at all. Now, ironically, it is probably the case that when it comes to the longevity of AI, it is probably a net better thing for the industry that everyone latched onto the skeptical study as opposed to the optimistic study, because it shows that despite all the bubble screamers, the narrative at least is very, very far from overheated right now. But in any case, when we move beyond the meta interpretations of where the AI discourse is, there is still a ton of really valuable stuff in this Wharton study that very much deserves a review, and that is what we are doing today. As I said, this is the third annual Wharton GBK study of enterprise gen AI adoption. And the story, by and large, is of an AI moving mainstream, adoption becoming ubiquitous, and integrated into the fabric of everyday life, and ROI not only beginning to be measured, but also showing up. The big theme one, let's call everyday AI, or AI moving from curiosity to core workflow. The theme is basically that Gen AI is now part of daily work, not an experiment. 82% of enterprise leaders now use Gen AI weekly, and almost half of decision makers, 46%, report using Gen AI daily. That's up 17 percentage points versus last year. Knowledge and familiarity with Gen AI has risen. 77% report being at least somewhat familiar with Gen AI, although there are slight laggards in marketing and management. We're starting to see functional adoption patterns where key business tasks are seeing higher Gen AI adoption. Marketing content creation is up. Internal support and help desk is up. Document and meeting summarization is up. Presentation and report creation is up. Idea generation and brainstorming is up. Data analysis and analytics are up. And while there are lots of different benefits of AI, half of the top 10 Gen AI use cases directly boost employee productivity. Top 10 use cases in 2025 are, in order, data analysis and analytics, document and meeting summarization, document and proposal editing and writing, presentation and report creation, idea generation and brainstorming, marketing content creation, customer service and support, email generation, internal support and help desk, and sales content creation. Interestingly, though, AI agents are starting to emerge. 58% of enterprises are testing AI agents, mostly among this cohort for process automation, analytics, and workflow orchestration. And yet, really, the big story of this survey is not about usage, but about ROI. Enterprises are very clearly shifting from use to proof. First of all, ROI measurement has become standard. 72% of companies are formally tracking their Gen AI ROI. The functions that lead in structured ROI tracking, including HR at 84% and finance at 80%. Maybe the biggest headliner statistic of the whole report, three-fourths of enterprises report positive ROI. 74% overall are seeing either moderately positive or significantly positive ROI, with smaller firms between 50 and 2 billion in revenue seeing more ROI so far than enterprises with 2 billion plus in annual revenue. Now, we have seen over the past couple of months just a slew of indications that ROI is coming faster than people in many cases would have thought, and the perception of ROI continues to rise. So what are going to be the big blockers? Well, as we've seen over and over again, it's going to be more about people than employees. While 89% of respondents said that AI enhanced skills, 43% still fear skill decline as well. And while overall, the vast majority of decision makers are saying they feel more positive about Gen AI over the past year, they are also still cautious as well. What all of this sets up very clearly in my mind is a 2026 where the key theme of the year is going to be not only about measuring ROI and demonstrating ROI, but about understanding how it compares. 
We're now up over 700 use cases that have been contributed to the AI ROI benchmarking study and getting just a huge degree of granular information around where the benefits are really coming. Part of why I wanted to launch this study is that I want to start to have benchmarks where organizations can understand A, what type of benefit they're supposed to get out of AI, and B, whether the results that they're seeing are actually commensurate with their peers and colleagues. On the first part, as much as we talk about AI and productivity, there are actually a variety of different types of benefits and impact that AI can have. There's time savings, cost savings, new capabilities, enhanced throughput and output, reduced risk, improved decision-making, enhanced revenue, new revenue lines, and understanding which use cases are relevant for which of those different types of benefits is really important. Second, because we're all floating in new territory, we don't need to just know whether AI is improving things, but whether it's improving things in a way that's commensurate with what we would expect. For example, if a particular deployment is helping your team increase marketing throughput by 10%, that might seem great until you find out that for all of your competitors, it's increasing marketing output by an average of 20%. Look, ultimately, the ROI survey is just one very small part of what is going to be a big theme for all of next year. But still, if you want access to all the information that we find from that, go to roisurvey.ai, contribute, and you will get the results when they are completed towards the end of this month. Bringing it back to Roundup on Wharton, what do they think about what 2026 will bring? The study authors write, 2026 could be the turn from accountable acceleration to performance at scale, where today's ROI metrics, playbooks, and guardrails let enterprises rewire core workflows deploy agentic systems, and reallocate budgets towards proven returns. They point out that four out of five see Gen AI investments paying off in about two to three years. 88% anticipate increasing Gen AI budgets in the next 12 months. And everyone is trying to figure out how to make or get the talent that's required for this new era. So that is the story of the Wharton study, optimism, excitement, and ROI coming into focus. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, peace.